Hey guys, and welcome to another devlog video for the Animal Behavior Kit. I am super excited to finally share probably the biggest feature coming in 1.3, and as you saw in the title, it is the fact that now amphibians or hybrid animals are possible. One of the biggest requests that I've gotten since I released ABK was for more animals to be able to swim or fly, right? ABK is still focused mostly on ground animals, but animals such as this guy here, a crocodile, a hippo, a duck, a swan, animals that can go into the water, that has always been missing. So I've had that in the back of my mind since I released this, gosh, six months ago, right? It's a big feature that I like to bring at some point. And I've been working on this for probably six weeks now. I started working on it on and off. And I've been showing you guys other systems, but this has been kind of the big, big feature that I've had in the back of my mind working as much as I can. So without further ado, I do want to show you what I have. It is a component. Remember, I'm trying to keep things as modular as possible. So not every animal will have this functionality. Uh, but as you can see here, most animals that are on the ground obviously are using the nav mesh. So when the animal goes into the water, I basically had to code from scratch a brand new movement system, basically almost like flying AI, floating AI, because the animal has to move inside the water volume and it can't use the nav mesh anymore, uh, which is which means that it's it's complicated. <laughs> uh, so hopefully I'm gonna show you guys what I have so far. Hopefully it's not too buggy. I still have uh, some ways to go to get this to a point where it can be released to you guys. Uh, but I just didn't want to wait any longer and I had some time today to record the video. So here we go uh, So I'm selecting the crocodile here and uh, if I go down here You'll see that there's a new component comp movement mode swim Right, so that's gonna be a new component that you guys can add to all your animals and As I'm gonna go through some of the settings here just like every other component. There's an activation mode here which means that for gaming purposes if you wanted to have your animals only be able to swim at a specific time in your game, you could manually activate this here uh, via an interface or casting or whatever. And then if you go into the swim details, again, you want the swimming to be active. And then there's going to be a timer <clears throat> where the animal do does a sphere trace and looks for nearby water. So the way it works is the animal is going to be on land, walking around, right, in this crocodile. And in this case, every five seconds, <clears throat> it'll do a trace with a radius of, in this case, 12,000. That's going to be a massive trace, right? So probably in your game, you want to have this a lot smaller, like maybe 5,000 or whatever. And if it finds water, it'll then use this percent chance to go to the water. And in this case, one is 100%. And at that point, if it can go to the water and it found water, it'll actually start moving towards the water to go swim. So these three settings here allow you to add a lot of variety and randomness, right? You may want to have the animal check for nearby water every five or 10 seconds, but maybe only a 50% chance to go into the water. That means that when the game is going on and you have several crocodiles, some crocodiles are going to go to the water more often than not, while others are going to stay in the land. Or if the crocodile is really far, then it won't go into the water, right? If the crocodile's all the way in the, at the end of the map, it doesn't really seem natural that he's gonna come all the way here to the water, right? You may, you may have different bodies of water. So it'll just go to the nearby water. Uh, then we have the water surfaces class. There's nothing really much to talk about here, but we need this uh, class to know where the surface of the water is. And you'll see that in a second. Then you have engage behaviors for the water. I'm not going to show that today because it's still kind of buggy. But basically, you have the option to either use the regular engage behavior or use your own specific water engage behavior. And you see the same list here. Right now, I have ignore, attack, and flee. I'm not planning to add defend or hide for now. So most likely, I'll make a different uh, enum here with the proper options. Um, so then you can just go ahead and choose what is the engaged behavior in the water. Then you have swim modes. You have three different swim modes. You have the default, which is swim both on the surface and underwater. 
but you can also choose to only swim underwater or only swim on the surface. So some animals, you may just want them to be on the surface. So let's say that you want your, uh, your ducks to only be on the surface. They should not be swimming underwater like fish, right? So for a duck, you probably will just choose swim only on the surface. Or you may have another animal that doesn't really swim on the surface. You just want it to be underwater and then you can select it here. In this case, for the crocodile, I want them to both swim in the surface and go underwater. And then what you have here is different timers or ranges. So the surface time range will be in this case between 30 seconds to 40 seconds. So it'll pick a random value between these two min and max. Then it'll stay this amount of time in the surface. And then after that, it'll go underwater. And then it'll choose again a range between in this case 10 to 20 seconds. And then you have a range of overall amount of time that the animal will stay in the water before going outside of the water. So again, a lot of flexibility here. In this case, I'm telling the crocodile that he's gonna be most of the time in the surface between 30 to 40 seconds, and then going underwater between 10 to 20 seconds, and then repeat. Again, the ranges give you a lot of flexibility and randomness, but you can choose some animals to be mostly on one of the, on the surface or underwater, and you can do that by changing the timers here. 300 seconds is the total amount of time that the animal will be in the water, and then it'll actually try to go out and then roam around. And as soon as it roams around, it goes back to this timer here, and then it'll check, in this case, five seconds, and it'll try to come back to the water. So normally, you would have a much longer timer here, so when the animal goes out of the water, he can actually roam around for some amount of time and then search for water again. All right, uh, I'm talking too much. So let me just go ahead and show you guys. So five seconds, by the way, the animal will ignore me. I wanna make sure I am on ignore. There you go. Because I don't want him to start attacking me now. I just want him to, uh, to move around. So as you can see, the animal's moving around. And after five seconds, it'll do a trace, it'll find the nearby water, and then it'll go to the water. And obviously this happens after the animal stops, does the trace. Come on. And now it found the water. You can, by the way, uh, do a debug so you can see the trace. I'm not showing that now. But you can obviously do a bunch of uh, different options to debug the system. The animal would now search for the water and it's going very slowly here, as you can see. And then once it detects the water surface, it switches to a different swim mode. And you can see now it picks randomly whether it goes to the surface or it goes underwater. And in this case, it chose to go underwater first. So if I go out of the water here, you can see that the crocodile is submerged and it's just swimming around. Again, this is full 3D movement and it avoids obstacles. And then after 10 to 20 seconds, you can see that it starts going up to the surface. And now it's going to swim on the surface between 30 to 45 or 40 seconds. And you can see on the surface, you can, you can actually see the eyes. So you have the option of selecting an offset for your mesh of how, uh, how above or below the water you want them to be. So obviously I've configured this one for a crocodile so you can kind of see the crocodile swimming around and now you can see that it's submerging again uh, and it's swimming. And it'll keep doing this back and forth for five minutes, right? 300 seconds. And then it'll go outside of the water. And I don't think we want to wait the 300 seconds here. Um, so I'll show you something else. Uh, I've also added a buoyancy system, uh, meaning that what happens if uh, the animal dies, it'll actually float up to the surface. And this is still, again, a, a very much work in progress, but I wanted to add it because I think it just makes sense. So. I'm just going to wait for the animal to go a little bit lower. So let's say that he's uh, submerged. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kill the animal. And right now the animal um, 
it's um, simulating physics and you can see it's going up very slowly so I'm gonna go out of the water you can see that it's going up and the way it works is basically it applies a physics force to the animal that slowly brings him up to the surface and you can adjust these values you can see that the animal is slowly floating away um, and you add force uh, per bone so you have to for your skeletal mesh you have to um, tell the system how much force to add per bone and that's why you see that even though this is simulating physics notice that it is um, the animal is floating uh, and you can see that it's kind of going um, in this in this uh, pattern right the tail is all the way down and the head is all the way down is because I'm applying force to two bones right here on his back uh, so depending on the animal you can choose which bone to um, you can see which bone to apply the force to get that shape uh, that you want all right um, you can also do attacks underwater and I and this is a uh, fairly buggy but I'll just go ahead and show you guys real quick uh, let's see here I'm going to do uh, water behavior I'm going to do attack and I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here and I'm gonna make myself invisible I want to make sure that he goes to the water first and starts swimming And he's going to use the exact same system, AI perception, by the way, to um, make myself out. You can see that it's now engaged. I have a little uh, print screen there. And he's coming to me. And then when he gets close, he's actually attacking me. And you can see that I'm using animations in this case. I am uh, using the same attack animation simply because um, I don't have proper animations, but if you have an animal with an attack animation while he's swimming, then he would actually use that proper animation. So right now I'm, I'm in God mode, which is why he's not doing any damage, but you can see that he's, he follows me around um, and uh, it attacks me. Same thing if you hit, if, if you select flee, it'll actually try to run away from you while swimming. Um, and you can see here it is uh, rotating properly. And if I get out of the water, it's kind of cool. Oh, is it stuck? Uh, maybe it's a little stuck here. Like I said, this is still a little buggy. Uh, oh, there you go. It's just going a little slow. It'll eventually uh, come out of the water and switch um, and switch engage modes and actually attack you while on the surface so um, it's going a little slow there you can change the you can change the speed hold on here of the swimming so if I if I collapse the swimming details and I go to set up floating movement you have a max speed and a max engage speed similar to the ground settings so for example the crocodile was fl was swimming very slowly towards me while engaged you can make this uh, number bigger and it'll actually uh, swim faster towards you there's an acceleration value here and a bunch of settings uh, that i don't have to go over for the avoidance here so you can see here there's a yaw and pitch adjustments the speed trace uh, there's a radius for collision etc so um, this is one of the biggest challenges and, and, um, that I have is what happens if I have a bunch of different animals and I have a different level here that I'm just going to show you real quick where I have this crocodile, but I also have this turtles. So you can see here and a lot of little turtles here. Uh, and what happens if I, um, have a bunch of animals like this box turtles and this pond turtles, right? Uh, and this crocodile all of these guys uh, that are trying to go to the water eventually they'll collide 
So I'm doing sp sphere traces and I'm trying to do uh, some collision detection here. So the animals uh, avoid each other and don't get stuck. So as you can see here, I have a lot more animals. They're all on ignore right now. They're not attacking each other. But you can see that now we have uh, a lot more animals coming. And you have a duck. And I'll explain what this duck does in a second here. And you have these uh, box turtles. So you can see these guys are all coming at different times because there is a range. And now we have a bunch of uh, animals swimming around. And they all have, again, different values for how long they'll stay on the surface and how long they'll go underwater. And that's because of the range. So you, ha you see the crocodile going down, but the turtles are mostly at the, at the top. They only come down. I don't even remember if I have them to come down much. But you can see the turtles are just at the surface while the crocodile is going up and down. And this little guy here that has the uh, the debug on is a it's a it's a duck model. It's a little puppet, um, and that's the last thing I did want to share with you guys. Uh, this is another reason why this is taking a little bit longer. Here's the problem that I have. Um, so far, every single system that I've included with ABK has an animal a mesh that I include, so you guys can see the the system in action. And I'm not an artist. So all the animals that come with ABK are from Epic Games, right? The deer, the cro well, not the crocodile, but the deer, the, the spiders, the bears. They're all coming from um, Epic Games projects that are free. Uh, so what I've done is I've asked um, one of the members of the community um, if he could help me by creating an animal that would be a, um, an amphibian, a hybrid animal. And um, one of you guys in the community, I'm not going to say his name, uh, has actually offered to create that animal for me. Um, so he's actually creating a duck model that will come with ABK, which will be set up with this new system. And you can see here that I just have a little mock, super low poly duck because we were testing the animations. Uh, so this is obviously not the final model, but I have him working here. Um, Obviously, these uh, turtles are from, a, from an asset in the asset store, and so is this crocodile, which I have for testing purposes. But obviously, I can't include these guys in ABK. So, he is actually working on a model that will come in 1.3. So, he's really busy, and he's doing this for free. He's just being extremely gracious and, and nice. So... We are going to wait for him to finish his model so I can include this in, in ABK. So I ask you guys for patience. Um, I know that a lot of you are anxious and wondering why is 1.3 taking so long. This is the biggest update I've ever done for ABK. And 1.2 was pretty big. There's a lot of changes in the code. Things that I haven't even talked about or really shown. For example, you'll notice that there are no water blocking volumes here. That's the first problem I had to solve. If you look at the tutorials, um, what I have is a blueprint that's a spline that basically blocks the AI from going to the water. I've completely redone this system, which now you don't need a, a blocking volume. Uh, the AI, the regular AI like the deer, will actually trace their locations and look for water and avoid it. And the animals that need to go to the water can go to the water. So there's a lot of things that are that are included in 1.3 that still need to be uh, tested. And the biggest one is still the swimming system that I want to include. But as you can see, there's still uh, some work to be done, uh, specifically on the engaged behaviors, right? So the animal doesn't get stuck, engage, a flee, and, uh, and attack. And some additional weirdness with the collision where sometimes the animals can get stuck. So... That's kind of where we are today, guys. Uh, I do ask for your patience. Uh, I am doing this on my free time literally at night. Uh, if I can get an hour or two every night, that's really, really good. But that's not always the case. So there's still a lot of other systems that I've included that are still uh, a work in progress. The other videos that you guys have seen, like the activation manager, 
uh, some of the improvements to the spawning is to the spawners and the and the animal um, population control. All those things are working, but are not fully tested and polished, right? So I still have some work to do. Uh, but the biggest uh, item is going to be again this uh, swimming system, the swim mode that you guys have seen here today. I still have a few weeks to try to get this thing polished. Um, so yeah. I wanted to take the time to show you guys what I have so far, but again, please be patient. Uh, I still need time to polish this and iron out most of the bugs, and I'll probably release this as a beta feature um, in ABK, which means that there's probably not going to be completely perfect. There's going to be some, some minor uh, things that you need to take care of. Uh, and then also, we have to wait for the mesh that we will include with ABK. So, um, so yeah, thank you guys so much. Again, I've been uh, working on this on and off for so many weeks now, uh, and finally have the chance to show you guys. So please do let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions, I'm showing you all the options, uh, the movement component here. Um, so if you have any, um, any suggestions as to, um, different options here, do let me know. But I think that the setup I have here is very, very flexible for most use cases. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below, or you can message me uh, via Discord or email me. I really want to hear what you guys have to say. And again, please be patient. I am working on ABK as fast as I can, but there's a lot of things that are coming for 1.3. Um, so yeah, thank, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video.